the, like whenever people hear the, the name Pac-Man movie, he wants to get a, a, a reaction out of it, and people are just being like, huh? Like, just like, it's a band name? Hello, I'm Donnie Bell. Welcome to Map Drumming. Today we're here in Houston, Texas with drummer Dan Garcia from the band Pac-Man the Movie. Dan was kind enough to invite us over here to ask him some questions and to learn a little bit more about the band. Dan, thanks for having us over today, of course. Alright, so the first question I'd like to ask you is, how did you get started being a drummer? So the way that I started drumming was uh, I grew up as a little church boy and uh, pretty much the way that I got into drumming was like just like watching the, the drummer. I would just like obsess over whatever the drummer was doing and like just be crazy about it because like to me at the time those drummers were like famous people so if I ever saw them like outside of the drum set and outside of the stage I would be like that's that's the drummer I want to be like him and uh, my, my parents eventually caught on and they were like let's get this kid a drum set and sure enough it happened. Alright so what drew you to drums as opposed to any other musical instrument? I don't know, drums really stuck out to me. I guess nothing else really caught my eye that way, so uh, that's pretty much why I, I, I chose drumming as a little kid. I gotcha, okay. So you said, you know, starting off, you, you kind of looked up to other drummers and tried to mimic them. Did, did you have a teacher, or are you self-taught? So I'm mostly self-taught. It's a mix of both, actually, because so whenever I was a little kid, I started drumming at like six, Five, five to seven years old, there's really no like an right answer to that, so I just give that range from five to seven, I started drumming. Um, but uh, whenever I would go to church, I would literally like memorize the songs and like go home and do the exact same thing and somehow, some way, that's how I learned how to play drums. Okay. And, and then, uh, and then uh, going back to having a teacher, I also like, when I was in uh, sixth grade, I joined the band, and that's where I got a lot of the, the rudiments and stuff from, you know, learning paradiddles and stuff like that. All. And then going into high school, doing marching bands, so that's where it got a lot more complicated, and uh, that's where I got a lot of uh, my technicality from. So it's a mix of self-taught and having teachers. I did actually have uh, someone from church give me like some lessons when I was like 12 years old. And that did help a lot. And he's he's like he's probably been the only teacher I've had on, on drum set consistently. Other than that, it's just been uh, with other drummers here and there. My uh, old uh, drumline teacher teaching me things on the drum set here and there after drumline practice or whatever. So yeah. Okay. So it, it seems like you're you have a very diverse background as far as learning drums. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does your typical practice routine entail? So lately, I have been, my favorite thing to do right now is uh, listen to tracks without drums and just flow, like just play whatever I can come up with. That, that's really what I like to do because uh, I'm not to say that I, I'm done learning uh, like rudiments and stuff like that, but I, I love how flow feels. So I like to play with the drumless tracks that are just like, like loops. So. Um, I just go on there, and, and that's how I how, that's how I warm up pretty much. That's what my practice routine would look like. Other than that, if I'm like recording for a uh, like another band, then I'll I'll just listen to their tracks for hours, and then you know play whatever I can and, and write. Okay. So, what do you think separates you from other drummers? Uh, I guess it's just uh, I mean. That's a tough one because I feel like, I, I don't feel like I have a, a really big difference from anybody else. It's just a, an acquired taste of all these different genres that I like, you know, coming from church, now playing rock music that's just absolutely nuts. Um, it, it, yeah, it really stems from just the growth that I had going out of playing uh, strictly church music and then getting into uh, rock bands like Pierce the Veil, um, one that really inspired me and shaped a lot of how I drum is uh, Hill of the Sun, one of my favorite bands. 
And uh, now one of one of the bands that I uh, gather a lot of inspiration from is called the Mars Volta, and they've had like three different drummers. And uh, I gather a lot of inspiration from um, one of their previous drummers called uh, Thomas Bridgen. Yeah, he's super yeah. super sick guy. That's he's one of the main guys that inspired me to just flow all the way. You know, just make it feel good. Smile on stage while you're playing. Have yeah. a good time. Let the hair go. His nickname you know. is the Predator. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me about your favorite venue. So I haven't played very many venues. I've only played here in Houston. I've played two um, warehouse, the studio, they have like two different, it, it's it's one venue, but they have two different like rooms. So I've played in the ballroom, which is the smaller room uh, versus the, the, no, I played in the studio versus, yeah, versus the ballroom. Uh, the ballroom is much bigger, you know, for, for bands with, uh, you know, a bigger audience, but I played in the studio um, opening up for uh, these bands, Le Boucherettes. Uh, who Omar Rodriguez Lopez from the Mars Volta, his brother's playing that band. Oh wow. That okay. was before I knew the Mars Volta, so like those really? those guys came up to me and they were like, sick, and I was like, I don't know who you are, but thanks. <laughs> and now it's just like I really missed that opportunity to be like, wow. But uh I would have to say uh Scout Bar uh near NASA Parkway here in uh Houston near Houston uh with my band Merlin and I think I think that one would have to be my favorite one. It was it was super cool, but I don't have too much experience on stage, so I would have to say it's Scout Bar. Okay, so because you don't have too much experience on stage, do you ever deal with performance anxiety? Yeah, crazy really? uh, performance anxiety. Mostly, mostly whenever I don't know what I'm doing. If I uh, if if I am playing, you know, with my band that I that I know the music to. Then uh, I'll get I'll get a little bit of nervousness, you know, once it starts. But then I'll be like, well, what am I so scared for? So I that's when I just let loose. And I I my favorite thing to do is perform. Like I love to go crazy. I scream while I'm on stage. Good thing nobody can hear. <laughs> but like I love to just go ham and and just my favorite thing is to perform. So I do get uh, anxiety at first, but it, it all lets off if I know what I'm doing. Now, if I play with another band, like I told you earlier, I played with the band who hit me up the day before, and uh, they were like, can you learn an eight song set and play tomorrow? That to me was like super nerve wracking, but I pulled it off somehow, and it was really, really fun. So that was really, it was a nice experience. Wow, eight songs in a night? <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Thank you. Okay, what gear do you use? I am a big uh, Tama guy, as far as okay. drums. Uh, we don't use them for Pac-Man the movie. This is not my drum set. Yeah, this is definitely not Tom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but uh, my drum set, I have a Tama Superstar Classic. Um, it's really, really cool. So many like cool features to it. My favorite thing lately has been the all the drum locks, all the locks for the like the stands and stuff. And yeah. you know, just, that way, whenever you t tear apart and you put it back in, the locks are there and they're like, you know, it's right here and. You're just like, oh cool, I gotta slip it in there, I don't have to adjust or anything. Um, and then as far as symbols, I'm a huge, huge, huge Sabian guy. Um, I love Sabian a lot, those symbols are just super sick um, and really durable too. And as far as sticks, I recently got into um, the Pro March Hirakashi Oaks 5As. I'm a 5A guy, I don't like 5B, I feel like they destroy drums and cymbals. So uh, yeah, th those are those are my go-tos. Okay, cool. So hypothetical question: mm -hmm. If you had to walk to your next show and you could only carry one piece of equipment, what would you bring? My snare. Your snare. Yeah. Okay. Why yeah. your snare? Because I feel like oh, that's weird. Because it's like you would also need the kick drum, but I feel like <laughs> the snare because you can you can you can literally just play the snare and like. You know, chop it out on the snare, and it'll yeah. it can suffice. It can okay. do as much as it can, really. Whereas if you brought the bass, you'd just like probably play to the downbeat or something, or just yeah. go along with the beat. But I feel like with the snare, you can just chop out, uh, noodle. You know. Okay. I feel like that would that would be a really important piece. Okay. Another hypothetical question for you: Would you rather play entry level drums with pro cymbals or pro level drums? Entry level symbols. 
I think um, I think pro level symbols with entry level drums because I feel like if you put on the right if you slap on the right heads and you know how to tune you can make any drum set sound good like I had this old drum set uh, that I just got away from because I, I just got that uh, Thomas Superstar classic it's a it's a drum set that's like it was like Yamaha before it was even Yamaha it's called Yamaha Music and if you look that up you can't find anything about that anywhere so like I played on that for a lot for, for a really long time and I would just slap some Evans heads on there I forgot to mention Evans I love Evans a lot um, the hy hy hydraulic glass uh, heads and they just, it sounded amazing. I've had so many compliments playing that drum set. So it's just like, you can make, you can make a really bad drum set sound super good with the right, um, you know, little equipment on it. And my favorite thing, I feel like what makes a really good setup is the cymbals. So we don't have, you know, great cymbals. To me personally, it, it's just like, it's not as good. Okay. So, yeah. so my next question was, would you go with broken drums? or broken cymbals, but it already sounds like you're probably going to go with broken drums over broken cymbals. Yeah, it depends on how broken you seem like a cymbal guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like a huge cymbal guy. Okay, la last hypothetical <laughs> question for you. So if you could no longer play drums, what would you do? Oh man, I would, <laughs> I would be really sad, um, but probably I guess my, I have a uh, I have a little passion for for uh, skating, like skateboarding. Okay. So um, outside of music, that's something that I would do. But if I couldn't play drums, I would probably sing. I'd be a vocalist. You know, oh, okay. If, if I had to stay in the, if I stayed doing music. Cool. So, what advice would you give to other aspiring drummers? My advice would just to be. To be yourself first and, and let everything come naturally. So if you feel like you're forcing yourself to learn drums and you just don't feel yourself, uh, you know, if you don't feel yourself while you're behind the kit and you feel like it's just hard and, and it feels like a, a chore more than a, a passion or a hobby, then you probably have to get out of it, you know. But if it feels natural, and, and you're learning these things and it feels really good. It's not, obviously it's not gonna be easy at all, but if, if that is no problem, then you should stick to drumming. But like I said, if it feels like a chore to learn drums, then uh, it's probably not meant for you. And practice, 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 practice. A lot, because uh, especially like if you're, if you're younger, like those, those years, you know, playing whatever it is, like just, going nuts on the drums even though if you don't know what you're doing if you're little doing that that goes along with because that's how I learned I didn't know what I was doing when I was playing drums as a kid but somehow I ended up where I'm at now which is with two bands and you know coming up or whatever yeah okay so right now you're performing with two bands mm -hmm. if you could collaborate with any band or any musician or music artist who would it be Cedric Bixer Zavala from the Mars Volta. Really? I feel okay. like that guy just, I feel like his brain is amazing. His yeah. brain is definitely like a dream. Like, I don't know, just the the, the musicality of, of the people from the Mars Volta, those guys just like have it all. They're just, they're, their imagination and creativity is, is to me like more than a world, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. So I would love to, uh, to, to, you know, c collaborate with those guys because I feel like it'd be really, really fun and some really nice stuff would come out of that. Yeah, he has an amazing voice. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so good. Pac Man the movie. Mm -hmm. How did you all get started? I believe because I wasn't in the band originally, I believe it just started with. Uh, so the way Pac Man is set up or was set up at first was uh, Pac Man the movie was a, a super group, you would call it. Um, of two bands, two local bands from Houston, one called Dead Mother, the other called Mannequin Mishap, um, and it was just those, some of the people from those bands coming together to make this one really, really crazy nut job of a, of a band, and just having a lot of fun, and uh, I recently got into the band, oh, I joined the band uh, later last year, and um, 
we started practicing this album that we wrote, or that uh, Winton wrote, and uh, we got in the studio, recorded it, and uh, that's pretty much how I, you know, became part of the band, and that's the origin of, of how Pac-Man movie started. I know everybody's wondering, what's the hidden meaning behind the name? <laughs> so, uh, uh, Winton has told me, and uh, it's just like, he wants to get a really, the, like whenever people hear the, the name Pac-Man movie, he wants to get a, a, a reaction out of it and people are just being like, huh? Like, just like, that's a band name? Uh, and then he, the, 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 that name also was uh, inspired by this other band called Gallica, the movie that uh, the guys in the band are really into. So I, that's where that comes from. It, it's really thought out, but it's also kind of impulsive. So it's just like, I'm pretty sure Winston, the way he rides it, he's just like, let me do something crazy right here. And somehow, with his uh, talent, it like makes sense. Who knows how it does, but it like makes sense, and people really like it a lot, and, and it, I like it a lot too, so uh, I'm pretty sure that's that's how that works. So what, what's the creative process for you guys? Uh, well, Winston writes all the music for Pac-Man the movie. He pretty much just like when he feels like the time is right, or whenever uh, he just has all the whenever he has ideas coming at him, the dude just sits down in his room and gets his laptop, records demos, and he'll write he'll program the drums, which I learned, and um, and then it's funny too because like on the on the scratch tracks for the album that we just recorded. He, uh, as far as like lyricism and, and vocals, he, this dude literally just screamed. He was just like, wah, 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 And then like, he comes with the lyrics later, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. He just like sits down and, and writes literally everything. And it's crazy to me to think that this giant, you know, project uh, with all this craziness going on comes from one mind. And I just contribute to it pretty much, you know, I, I learn the drums and I'll add my things here and there that I feel like are necessary. I don't, I don't change up too much. I was going to rewrite some of the album stuff, but I, after uh, really um, listening to the songs heavily, I realized that um, those tracks don't, didn't need to be changed all that much. I just added my own things here and there. Okay. So, what's in store for... Pac-Man the Movie. Got an album coming out on July 22nd. The album is called Pac-Man the Movie 2, Eat Lives. <laughs> nice. We really just want to play a bunch of shows uh, once this album is out because, you know, that's the way to promote, really. And uh, a lot of people want to come see us, it seems like. So we want to go to as many places as we can, uh, you know, within reason. So how can the viewers find you and Pac-Man the Movie. Pac-Man the Movie and myself, we're everywhere. Uh, Pac-Man the Movie is on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to music, we're on YouTube. We just posted a, a music video for our single called Hell's Kitchen, and uh, our, our channel is called Pac-Man Them, so it's like Anthem, but it's like Pac-Man Them. Um, but for me, I have my own drum page uh, where I do drum covers. And uh, I do covers like the Mars Volta, I do my own covers for my band Merlin. I'm going to do some covers for Pac-Man the Movie pretty soon once the album is out. Um, but yeah, my, my YouTube name is uh, Daniel Garcia Drums. Alright Dan, well again I want to thank you for having us over. And until next time, keep counting and don't stop drumming. <laughs> Look at what okay. I found! On uh, every 3 16th notes, so yeah. it's like a dotted 8th note. Pac-Man the movie. <laughs> the Pac-Man movie. <laughs>